Hello and welcome to St Andrew's Wallace Green in Lowick, Church of Scotland. My name's the Reverend Adam Hood and it's a great pleasure to welcome you to this historic building. It's often said that a person's life is shaped by the experiences that they encounter. And that can be true of a church as well. St Andrew's Wallace Green has played a part in the life of Berwick ever since it was built in 1859. And today its members continue to be involved in many different activities throughout the local community and beyond. In this documentary film, I would like to invite you to meet some of the members as they talk about what's been important in the church's life for them, and also as they look ahead to the future and to new opportunities for cooperation and local service in the years to come. I do hope that you enjoy the documentary. I first was associated with the church in 1943, uh, 1945 when I was a young reporter with the Berwick Advertiser and one of the calls we had to make was on the minister of the parish church and the minister of Wallace Green Church who at that time was the Reverend R. Marshall Smart and I found him very helpful, very kind and straight away I learned from him that Wallace Green was known as the friendly church and I've never had any reason to change my mind about that. It is, it's really a wonderfully friendly church. Presbyteries didn't, I understand, open up to the newspaper people but in Berwick's case they did. Wallace Green was obviously the largest church and the biggest congregation and it had a terrific impact on the, uh, the whole area. I first came to a regular Sunday service in St Andrew's Wallace Green in 2004, not long after the Reverend Paul Sewell had come into post. I hadn't planned to come, but I was involved with the Berwick's annual border marches and found myself with a couple of hours free. I was kitted out in all my walking gear, boots, etc., so I'm not really dressed for church. But one thing that struck me was that nobody raised an eyebrow about how I looked, and I was welcomed anyway. This church is a significant building in Berwick, standing clearly on the skyline and visible from some distance. Its history and its role in the town is also significant, and I like that it is able to host big events, bringing people in who otherwise wouldn't come here. I do wish we were able to be open more often to allow people to come in both when it is quiet, for a period of escape and meditation, as well as for those special occasions. I think for me it's when I first came to the church for the first time and everyone was so so welcoming and um, quite um, a different experience for me and it, uh, yeah it was quite warm and, and yeah something will really stick with me how lovely it was on that first kind of day I came. One thing that really sticks with me is when we went to um, the Rose Gardens for a picnic because um, it's, it's, I really got to know people a lot better and it was a great time for fellowship and um, played games and enjoyed the baking <laughs> and um, yeah it was just a really enjoyable enjoyable event. Um, well, I'm Siobhan, I'm 15 and I've lived here all my life and I used to go to the Sunday club but now I go to the youth group and occasionally help with the Sunday club things. And my sister got christened here so that's mm. the second one thing that stands out. Yeah. Especially recently we've started to um, reach out with the youth club we're bringing in people that are more of our age um, and they, they haven't been in this kind of environment before um, and that's quite exciting for me um, and I'm sure for Siobhan as well. Yeah. We th th have um, quite a few sort of social events but we, we've had so lots of social events in the past. I don't think we've any more now than we had then and of course we have now have Lady Elders and things which um, creates a different atmosphere in the, in the, in the session. The, 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 the minister here has normally been padre to the British Legion, so we've always had a fairly big involvement in the um, November Remembrance ce celebrations and uh, with, the, um, guild, with the parish church next door we've done alternative, so that's been always, and we have had some, we had the 150, 
Tears service, and we had the moderator of the General Assembly to Church of Scotland that year. Well, that was a, an important service. I suppose, um, in my time, the biggest thing we've ever done was the 150th celebrations, which was quite a big thing. And the moderator came down, and there was this huge service, and we fed everybody in the pews, and it was it was a time of real excitement and looking forward to that event. Um, it was good fun. Well, I've got to say, my, my own wedding, and of course my my son's baptism uh, have got to be have got to be the the main highlight in this building. Certainly, my, my wedding was absolutely fantastic. But of course, the child's baptism when you've got a child, it, it seems to be the best thing in the world. So that was a, a really great day, and I had a lot of people here and a, a lot of food through the back. So it was a, a brilliant day all round, and I think that was really the highlight of my, my time here. The welcome that Karen and I got when we first came was something we'd never encountered in any other church. People are very warm, the fellowship is excellent, the minister I feel is doing an excellent job. The church is about the people. You don't need a building to be a church. The church is, uh, is the people and I think sometimes all churches lose sight of that fact. You can meet in any 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 hall, any any group of people getting together could be a church. The minister, which was Alison Mikkel, press gang me into be doing the Beatles job, which uh, I'd done for 12, 11 or 12 years and I enjoyed it very much. But I really enjoyed it and got on well with all the the visiting groups and that, like the the guild, the bowlers, the everything that was involved with the church and the, and really got on well with them and really enjoyed it and was reluctant to pack it in to be quite honest. The church has to somehow get into schools, get into universities, colleges and um, grasp that opportunity to converse with that generation and if we can get the children and youth involved then I feel that's the way forward. Well I, I think that Adam is going the right way about it. He's very very good at encouraging youth. He's formed a youth club. He has a, a junior, uh, junior Sunday school and he, he is definitely right in attracting young people because it's not easy to get people involved at that age and the, what he's got now is certainly providing the framework on which he can expand in the future. Um, I think that we'll probably start new patterns in the future um, to kind of keep with the, the changing society. Um, a lot of people maybe can't come on a Sunday now because work and, and things like that and maybe we'll start to do things during the week um, that people can become involved in with the church. Where I see it in the future is adapting to modern needs without losing sight of the gospel message. Returning to being the heart of the community, whether here at St Andrews or across the river in Tweedmouth, Spittal, Ord or Scremiston. Where people attend the church that is nearest to them and become involved with their own neighbourhoods so that everyone can experience Christ in their homes and in their daily lives. I think the Flower Festival is one that will draw people into the church who aren't members and who aren't churchgoers. And I think it's making people aware that the church is here and that we offer various services and that we're not some threatening building, you know, it's quite a friendly atmosphere and, and it's community. And I think that's the important bit. I suppose the service that I got my 30-year um, certificate of being an elder was a, was a memorable service because I knew nothing about it till Alison Mikkel, the, the minister, began to talk and I thought, gosh, that's me she's going to start talking about and that's the first I knew about it, although my wife was obviously in on it and she knew that I was coming to church. That was a memorable occasion and um, we've had, as I say, some very memorable services and we've had some... Um, well-known people in the church as well, which uh, I had the privilege of meeting, yes. 
I think it's continued traditions that have been established over years. Yes, I think there are. It's. I, I think yes. I think the it's more continuous um, than the, it has been in the in the past. The traditions are much the same. Really, there's not not a big lot of change. Really, it's certainly a valid part of the community, and I think uh, it does a lot of good work, where charitable work and stuff like that. I think you've always got to be thinking of new ways, uh, whether it, whether you you're doing well at something or not so well, you, you've always got to try and think of new innovations and, and new ways forward, otherwise uh, you don't want to rest on your laurels and I think we could be doing a lot more and uh, I'm sure everybody here will be looking into doing more. I mean hopefully anyone coming through the door gets a nice welcome and is encouraged to stay for tea and coffee and a chat afterwards. And I think in the future Maybe we need to reach out to some of the holiday makers that come to this town. Um, population doubles during the summer and there's very little catering for them in that side. And maybe we need to sort of make them aware that we're here or even go to them um, and find ways of engaging with the visitors to the town. Having been actively involved in drama all my life uh, in local level and also the theatre group I formed, um, the abiding happy memories are the two people that have done little drama sketches with comedy attached. Um, you just need to look at the congregation as they leave to see how much they enjoy that sort of thing. And I don't want to decry what Adam says in any way, but I do fervently believe that that is the way forward to try and reach to people through various forms. Of art. It really shows the wealth of talent within the church and in the area that so many top class events have been held here under the church auspices. Uh, they had a very very long association with sport which many people don't realise probably. They were the official club for Berwick Rangers football club for many years when I was young, in the post-war 1950s, the church was very much the heart of the community. And it was the first place people looked, certainly in the congregation tradition, in times of trouble. And people responded. I remember a happy place where everyone was involved, even non-Christians appreciated it. I would love to see a return to this type of church, where small groups can meet, where everyone feels safe when our reliance on government and social services is secondary and it is the community that looks after its own. Berwick does rise to challenges when they are brought to the public's attention, food banks etc, but it isn't yet part of the day-to-day -day pattern of life. St Andrew's Wallace Green and Lowick Church is often known as the welcoming church and as you've seen in this documentary our members are always looking for new ways of reaching out to make a difference in the local community. Our church has seen some sweeping social changes and has been at the heart of many great historical events here in Berwick. Today the welcoming church still offers a warm invitation to anyone who would like to join us and be their own part of the story of this church and congregation. I hope that you've enjoyed this documentary and that we'll have a chance sometime soon to welcome you to our church. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>